Hey guys, it's Landon with RH. In this video, in theory, I'm going to show you how to build a compass dial, a Kogo compass dial. If you're not a surveyor, you may not know what Kogo is. Kogo is coordinate geometry. I need to do some Kogo tutorials in CAD, and I thought it would be helpful if we had a compass dial for that. So I'm going to do that in Inkscape. <clears throat> We need to get Miriam some more training on Inkscape, so I thought this would be, be a good way to get her another little tutorial video. So I've Inkscape open, this is version 1.4. And what I've done is I've just gone in and created some new layers. So I've got three layers here, text layer, a layer for my shapes, and a, a base layer that's just kind of like my layer zero if you're coming from CAD. So I'll close that. If you don't know where to get to that, it's under Layers in the menu, Layers and Objects. And I'm working in my standard template here. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is just create some basic shapes for my dial. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to pick the Circle tool. And I'm going to just go ahead and draw a circle here, roughly the size I want. And then we'll move it over to the center of the page. And I, I don't think I'll end up using this. Uh, I don't think I'll end up using this page. In fact, let's go ahead. Let's go in and just page or change our page setting real quick. So under Document Properties, we're going to make this square. So I'm going to make it six inches by six inches. I think that'll work. And then we'll put this in the center. Okay, so I want uh, kind of a ring shape. So I'm actually going to make another circle. And what I'm going to do on both of these is we'll get rid of the stroke. Come over here to my fill and stroke dialog. We're going to get rid of that stroke. And then I'm going to make this one white. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a little, a little bigger. So I've now I've got my ring there. I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to grab these two shapes and we're going we're going to go to path. <clears throat> I can never remember which one I want. So if you do division there, then now we actually have a ring shape. So there's nothing here in the middle. <clears throat> okay, now I want uh, this to be split up into quadrants. So to do that, I'm going to draw a square now. You want to make sure that you get the square to cover just one quadrant. And then we'll do the same thing. We're going to try this again. We're going to say path. You know what? I think we can do a union. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Edit, undo. Let's try this again. We can do division again, I think. Okay, so now I've got one piece there. And so uh, what we can do is actually get rid of this ring now. And uh, we can duplicate this a few times and then flip it. And we can actually come up with our parts of our ring that way. So I'm just hitting the Control D key there to duplicate, guys. And I'm just snapping to my cusp there. So now I have these pieces. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use our RH colors for our... Uh, diagram there. So I'm going to grab these two pieces of the ring in the opposing quadrants there. We're going to come over to fill and we're going to make those RH green. And then we'll grab these and whoop, we'll grab these and make these RH purple. Sometimes I don't remember the RH purple code. There we go. So now I've got my basic ring set up. What I want to do now is just put some little uh, tick marks on here. So let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and grab my tool here to draw a path, and we're just going to draw. We're just going to draw a path like that, and then we're going to come over to the stroke, and uh, we're going to give that a stroke. I'm going to make it black, but we're going to give it a uh, a width. I'm in inches here. I'm going to go 0 0.04 inches. So now I've got this little tick. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to send that to the bottom of the display order. 
and I'm going to duplicate it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that because I want to pull the rotation center down here to the center of the dial. And now when we come into the transform tool, we can rotate that by 45 degrees and it's going to rotate around the center of the dial. So you see how that, how that worked? We're going to duplicate it again, edit, duplicate, rotate again, and we can just repeat that till we get those lines all the way around our shape. And there, there's probably an easier way to do that with like a, an array, but this is going to work for us because we don't need very many. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these on a layer. So let's make a new layer and we're going to call this. So I've got everything on the text layer, which is not what I want. So I'm going to drop those down to the shapes layer. And then make a new layer. I'm going to call it lines. Dial ticks. And uh, we'll put those underneath the dial layer. And you're going to see when I move these ticks now to the layer, they're going to go underneath the other parts of the dial, which is what we want. So we're going to say layer, move selection to layer, and we're going to put those on the tick. You can see how they went underneath. Now just a little aesthetic thing. I'm going to grab these ticks on the cardinal directions, and we're just going to widen that stroke a little bit. So that stands out a little more. Now I think the last thing I want to do is I want to add some compass directions here. <clears throat> and uh, I, I want to number my quadrants. Let's number the quadrants first because that'll, be, uh, that'll be a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and grab our text tool. And we're just going to go ahead and draw a text here. And we're going to just label that number one. Now I'm going to go ahead and kill that stroke. So there's my number one. <clears throat> and let's see what font we have. Okay, it's on Oswald. That's our font, our standard font. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up here. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make this center justified. <clears throat> and then we're going to just pull it over here and we're going to duplicate it and we're going to move that over to the same spot and we'll make that that's quadrant actually this is quadrant row one this is quadrant four on the compass dial that's quadrant three That's quadrant two. <clears throat> and we're going to make those black, I think. And we're going to move them to the text layer. <clears throat> now, I think it would help if we had these uh, quadrants on the inside of the circle shaded also. So let's, let's try and do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab a square here, and I'm going to just draw up. To there and all we're going to do is change that to a shade of gray and drop it to the back oh it's got to be um, let's put that on the shapes dial layer why not I think I want a little lighter gray eh. that's probably good and then we'll just duplicate that and pull it down do the same thing Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, now what I want to do, um, now what we could do, <clears throat> it might look better if these numbers were centered in these shapes. Let me think about how I want to do that. <sighs> so if we grab these two and go to um, path, let's try division. Nope, that's not what I want. Uh, 
let's duplicate these and move them over here. Let's see if we can figure out how to do this. I can never remember which one of these I need. Okay, so it was different. So now I have this shape, so we can actually get rid of these. So I have this shape now. We can drop in, and then what we can do is we can select the text first and then the shape and go over to our line and distribute. <clears throat> and we're going to say relative to the last selected, and we're just going to center it. Now the number's centered in this square, or centered in this shape. It still looks a little bit off because of the way it does that calculation with the bounding box. Um, so we might just have to visually drop this in where we think it goes, probably there. So let's try that. I feel like these need to be, let's see here. Um, up four, I'm up four and over four from the center. So that would be, I don't know why it's doing that to me, there we go. Okay, so we'll rotate that. All right, so now we want to put in our uh, our text. So I'm going to actually do that in a separate video. I'm going to I'll stop this one. I'll do a separate video. We'll wrap this up with the with the compass bearings around the outside here.